of giving only one liter of milk, out of which 75% the calf has to drink, and the remaining 25% is part of a liter. How what? Nothing can happen. So let's just do some experiments, yeah? Let's do some genetic modifications. Make this cow give a lot more milk, because we have to feed our babies, huh? So, by doing that, they forgot there is a calf also coming out. No, no, let's take it out and send it to slaughterhouse, because we need the meat anyway. Give some machines and then suck the milk out. And then, it has to be given to the human babies more, so they are unstable by nature. So what do you do? Let's pasteurize it, let's homogenize it, let's keep it in the cold room, let's have some preservatives because they are going to bad. So one week, ten days later then, centralized, synthesized milk, you have to have system, now you have so-called, well, I was thinking it's a Fred Mayer or some, you know, Freddy's. So get a gallon of milk, feed the baby in a plastic bottle and plastic bottle, put it in. Oh, milk, it's not, uh, no, you just add some sugar. You taste the sugar, ah, very nice. <laughs> and that's what has happened. This happened in America long ago. By 1987, when I first came to America, actually the incident what triggered me to think of what I am doing now is happened in 1987. Though I had an inkling of what is happening while I was doing my PhD itself, I worked on microbial transformations of steroids for my PhD in Indian Stuff Science back then in 1980s. So I did have some inkling of what is going on, but then when I came to America for my postdoc, the first day, everything was confirmed. So a small six-year-old baby <coughs> in the hospital was bleeding. Menstrual cycle has started for 1986, 87. So I asked the doctor, why is this girl menstruating at the age of six back in India? It is 14 or 15 years old girl that menstruates. And it happening, but this girl is little early. Generally, it happens around nine years, years. By then, it's early. So I was in a shock of my life. It's as if 10 autumn bombs have fallen on this planet Earth. Then I asked him, so why are you worried? Just take, I needed to get a medical certificate. First day I have to join, you know, so go there and get some certificate. That was still going on at that time. Nowadays you have all these smartphones, you scan here, you scan there, and everything is sent directly. That's not what it was happening. We, we had to go physically and they take your blood and you know, all the things, and then you wait there in the reception hall and then. After one department, you go to another place, then they will give you another survey, you go and get checked, and then you have your heart checked, and then all things. You have to physically go and get things done. Has got calcium. You have to have calcium to grow very well. Millions and zillions of kids have grown up without this stupid artificial milk on this planet. They never had any problem with calcium. And then we started, oh, no problem. Then coffee came, tea came, and then we destroyed all the planets, mountainous areas, the forests, and then you only have monoculture of tea estates and coffee estates. So it's additions. How do we consume milk? With coffee, with tea. So the whole planet started drinking coffee and tea. Oh, coffee is not good, it has caffeine. So I drink milk. Then you have so-called health drinks. Born vita, this vita, that vita. Everything milk, milk. I'm drinking this milk with beautiful recipes. I love steroids, so you're addicted already. So that's why if I tell don't drink milk, you all start talking about calcium, this, that, but the essence of it is you are addicted. 
They don't want to give up any milk. And so anyone who says, don't give milk to your baby, that's what I've been telling for the last 25 years, just since I came to America. And that's why I ran away from America. I didn't want to give this milk to my baby. Because I, I was scared my baby will also be straight at the age of six. So you have created microbial imbalance and hormonal imbalance. So now the whole world, women are actually running around beauty parlors. Because there is moustache on the upper lips of all women in the world. In fact, right in a small village, we have a beauty parlor in Bihar Hills in Karnataka. It's actually a remote tribal village. We have a beauty parlor. Just have gone there and seen. What are they using? Again, chemicals. Just to get rid of the hair. Oh, now, no problem. We are high tech. Laser. So you have, actually, a lot of women are busy having schedules. That's what is happening all around the world. So you are imbalanced that way because all these hormones are getting into your body in the form of milk, which is complete food for your kind information. In the name of science, in the name of technology. And in the name of all doctors proclaiming, whoever says don't drink milk is a fool. You see how we have changed. And no one, no one, no one has any problem with this. So we parents all over the world are dumping this poisonous stuff into the mouths of the babies in the last 40, 50 years. And so whatever little balance they had is gone out of them. So you, what are these steroids? They are small micro quantities can correct, control your biological reactions. They are, that's the definition of this. And you have been dumping them in it's like large quantities. Even if you take one milligram, it's like ton of something falling on you. So women did enjoy all these benefits of milk. Now what about men? The sperm count itself has come. Instead of 120 million, we have only 20 million now. To the extent that the diagnostic labs write down now, if you have 20 million sperm count, it's okay, normal. <laughs> they have no idea. But just 50 to 70 years back, now 120 million. Why is this normal? Why is that abnormal then? But you need that 120 million pounds because in nature it is a competition of the sperms reaching the bone and that is the balance of the birth. And that has to happen in a wonderful balanced hormonal pool. This is competition. And now is the reason why we have the so-called early age nephros coming out of all the human bodies. So we have no microbial imbalance and hormonal imbalance. And leave all the problems that women are facing when they have so-called periods, uh, menstrual cycles. Uh, they are postponed or they are coming very early or when they have the womb coming out, it has a lot of issues because the balance is not there, they overbleed. Or, so with all this they have fibroids developing in it. So no problem, remove the uterus. So now it's from the stage of correcting through medicines, the so-called inconveniences, something called Chakwan Kati, you know, it's just operation table started up here. So anything is not tolerable, remove it. And now we have advanced through this hi-fi technology, we will re redo it, print it, 3D, CD, 5D, whatever, you know, like iPhone. Now it's what, 11, huh? <laughs> 6 to 7, 8, 9. Now, body doesn't change like that. It takes thousands and thousands of years for some small corrections to happen. So all these things are happening in the name of science. 
and actually we have been very unscientific all along. All along. Science is actually nowhere there in this picture, actually. Absolutely no science. But we are all doing everything in the name of science. And who are doing this? So-called scientists. And that's why I said I am very attached to this word so-called. Everything is going on with a lot of zeal and so these guys are doing science and all over the world people are, oh God, great. Just everyone is rushing here to learn the science. And they come learn and then go back and then become the agents of this science. So we have everything that is replicated that happens here. The whole world. So it's very easy. They created this Ma in Maya. It's a huge word, huh? It's in many dimensions, but in this small context, this is Maya. It's a very big word, okay? If you get into philosophy and spirituality, that's a separate discussion. But just a small introduction to Maya. So we are all now stuck in this Maya called science. Actually, there's no science here, but it isn't Maya. We all think we are doing science. Everything signed. So what actually happened is, I went to village just back in 1997, I went back and said, hey, this milk, don't drink. So a girl just gave birth. She doesn't know anything. Calcium is in the birth doctor. That means these guys, without any institutions, have been able to drill this into the minds of an unage so-called uneducated girl back in remote villages. I have been doing this since 1997. I have visited maybe almost 1,000 or 2,000 villages or towns in Karnataka. For the last 15 years I have been trying to communicate to people that we are imbalanced, microbial imbalance, hormonal imbalance, and I'm coming to the next, the most horrible imbalance that anyone can think of. I think we are getting the wind of it. <laughs> and as much we claim we are becoming scientific, as I told you, I demonstrated you that we do not know how to shift now. But then we are telling we want to go and live in Mars. Telugu lai the baag ki kosto. Mangalak bhaiyan ki wedi samsaran je to nami poddu le the dodi kuch kulla. Yeah, excuse us, huh? Who people don't understand Telugu? I don't need to pronounce in that fashion, but I get a kick out of it. So sad, isn't it? So now what are we doing? We, in the name of science, in the name of health, we are running around all these fellows. But what are we supposed to do if we really want to have be healthy? Is it so complicated now? It is so simple. Just don't drink milk. Don't drink milk. And if you do that, now if the planet, I mean the human race, stops drinking milk from tomorrow, after eight months, we can close down half the hospitals on this planet. Come on, clap. Can we do that? Not high fiber, it's the right fiber. So the right fiber grain, when you soak, absorbs water and the fiber just opens up 
and then the carbide starts releasing and then when you cook in a small flame and then feed yourself the digestion is ready and slow and steady release of glucose into your blood happens when this wonderful arrangement of God's creation in these grains and the slow and steady release of glucose is actually the essence of your health which is not present in your rice and wheat. Simple. So now you understand, I told you, we are getting into what is called glucose imbalance. What is glucose? What is glucose? It is the monomer of carbohydrates. And it happens to be the first energy molecule that is synthesized on this planet Earth by the plant kingdom or in the ocean a small one cell microbe called phytoplankton. So the energy of the sun god is just captured. So the first molecule that is what is synthesized in the process called photosynthesis in all the green leaves of this planet be it a gymnosperm or angiosperm. It captures the sun energy by dividing water molecule into oxygen and hydrogen and fixing the hydrogen onto the carbon dioxide and making glucose. And this process, it has broken the water while breaking the trapping energy has happened. So from the non-material domain to material domain. The glucose is now the captured energy is in the bonds of this carbon, carbon, carbon units. This is the wonder of the world actually, the photosynthesis. The non-material domain of energy is now made into a chemical energy. So the first thing that happens on this, if this reaction is not there, no life and when now that, that's a philosophical question. We do not know how these things happen, and it happened. Okay, anyway, that's the beginning. So we have an energy molecule called glucose. So it transforms itself into complex things in different plants of the planet. Different forms. Okay, so you guys do not know how to grow food. We know how to grow food. So let's do this business. So dump lots and tons and in 1950 the tonnage was 5,000 tons. Now these so-called companies do not know what you inventory. They don't know how much they are producing. Because we have contaminated the water bodies of the world so much so that the herbicide that we use is now in the blood of penguin. Where are penguins? South Pole. So all that chemical you are using in your lawns is found in. So this water-based irrigation flourished in the last 40-50 years along with technologies, steel industry, chemistry, everything. Just dump chemicals, dump chemicals, dump chemicals on the land and produce more, produce more, produce more, 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 wheat, wheat, wheat. It's a, and wheat, on top of not having fiber, it has 1% fiber, 1.2% 1, 1 fiber. It's on the top layers. So you remove it because we don't want things to be brownish. We want everything white. We make atta, that's your maida, whatever you call it in, in, in here, what we call all that? All-purpose flow. Ah, all-purpose flow. Yeah. And while making that, you have some oxidizing agents synthesized, actually the processes produce in the C2, in C2, something called aloxone. That aloxone is just like your bleaching powder. In fact, it is a chemical biologist used to produce in lab animals diabetes. So, but then you are all feeding your babies 
presents, donors, Dunkin' Donuts, McDonald's, Pizza, Burger, Submarine, no <laughs> Actually, it looks like the Feeding them All that is this atom, which has umpteen amount of elements. It's, it's the process you have allowed some. So, cooking, why all the troubles? Two minutes noodles. <laughs> No mother is required, no father is required. <laughs> you don't need any. Just boiling water, add these noodles, and noodles, 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 all over the world. Noodles, you, now you come in the airplane, you want noodles? Hot water, and they put that something. <laughs> That's it, cooking for you. Two minutes, everything done. So, our Amitabh Bachchan comes for advertising. <laughs> Two minutes. <laughs> this advertisement ran for a long time. And so people started, everyone's kitchen is filled with this noodles, that noodles, that oh, from China noodles, Malaysia noodles, America noodles. Oh, yeah, everyone is eating noodles. What are you eating? Aloksan is going into your mouth. Now you see, all of a sudden, young boys and girls started getting diabetes. Because this aloxan, what does it do? It just kills the beta cells of your pancreas. But you don't understand, it's not feeding the babies, you're also eating. <laughs> Chapatis, kulchas, not fellow sir. If you say, don't eat gehu, they will hate me. But then I keep telling, Gehu Penkudo, Cancer Bhagao. <laughs> so we have added so many chemicals in them. It's all science and technology for you. But that we have contaminated not only our food, all things in the system. So it's all happening in the name of food. And, uh, the name of healthy food. No, no. It's producing sickness. And so we are all sick, we have tablets. Because for any disease, you go for BP. How long should I take these tablets, doctor? Lifelong. Life long. Diabetes, lifelong. Thyroid, lifelong. Rheumatism, <coughs> lifelong. Cancer, till you have life. <laughs> so this is what has happened in the last 40, 50 years and we are all okay with it. So what did we need to do? We need to control the flooding of glucose into our blood. That's as simple as that, because we are designed to release the glucose slowly and steadily. And where is the control? No control. And you understand the biggest mistake the human race has done by choosing these two stupid grains? Rice and wheat. And rice has no control at all. So you eat, in 15 minutes it becomes glucose. And wheat with all these modifications, 10 minutes it becomes glucose. On top of it, wheat has got some protein called gluten. And it goes and <coughs> screws up your absorbing capacity of small intestine. It makes the whole lining hydrophobic. We need to be hydrophilic. The whole cells have to love water. But then, this is the base, and of course there are oils and the protein and all that, I will talk to you um, in another five ten minutes. So the base, three big imbalances, microbial imbalance, hormone imbalance, glucose imbalance. So how do we correct glucose imbalance? So you need to have something that releases glucose <coughs> into your blood slowly and steadily. And that can happen only when you have the carbohydrate laced with fiber, which is difficult to remove for the hydrolytic processes. So that's what God has done in these five things. Codomylate, 
Arikadu Telugu. I I hope most of you are Telugu fellows, so I'll just blur it out. Telugu. Kodo Milet Arikadu. And uh, all languages, we have a table. And then Raju will give you, you add to the group yourself, all the information is there. So Hindi, Gujarati, Marathi, Tamil, Kannada, all languages we have got the list. And there is also one website, Wholesome Tales. Wholesome Tales. Uh, it is from Delhi. All the things are there, all languages you can get. And Raj also has got a thing, he will provide, everyone can join the group and you will get all the information, details about, and I will give you some of the details of these grains. And so these grains, Koda millet, foxtail millet, barnyard millet, brown top millet, little millet, these five millets. And brown top millet is actually called American millet. Even now, Colorado, tons and tons of are produced. And what are they doing with it? It's called bird feed. So they give to bird and you eat meat. <laughs> so if they are stupid, we are idiots. <laughs> because Andu coral is one of the finest grains because its ratio of carbohydrate to fiber is the least, 5.5. It has 12.5% of fiber <coughs> interlinked with the carbohydrate and all the grains have got carbohydrate. In fact, Andukorlu, that is brown top millet has got 69% of carbohydrate and your rice has got only 79%. So we are not any less, we have all the carbs that you want. But how are they arranged? <coughs> the fiber is coming from the center of the seed the grain and then layers of layers, concentric layers. It's a spherical structure, so wonderfully there. And even if you make a flower out of it, that fiber to carbohydrate links are not gone. Even if you soak it, cook it, chapati or whatever you make, still the carbohydrate is not out of the clutches of fiber. Only our Hydrolytic steps have to release it slowly and slowly. And that is the beauty of this grain. So, where is the control now? Control is in the grain that you eat. So, the control is in the food. So, now you understand the definition of food now. A grain that releases glucose slowly and steadily is the first characteristic of any food that we need to. Where is rice and uh, wheat in this drama? It's nowhere. So, according to this definition, eh, definition, rice and wheat are not your food at all. <coughs> and lo and behold, from time immemorial, human race has eaten this thing. Brown top millet is American millet, little millet is African, barnyard millet are little, many varieties called actually Russian millet, German millet, Japanese millet, and then Kodo millet is Himalayan millet, the belt of Himalaya and the open spaces of the valleys, <coughs> this Kodo millet just grows by itself. And then we have what is called foxtail millet. It's Pinnacle looks like foxtail, that's why I call it foxtail millet. It is an actual Italian millet, Alps of Italy and all those areas. But then I recognize back in 1987 when all this, so if we can get back these grains and make our food, we should be able to correct this imbalance, the so called diabetes. Actually, how would this diabetes happen? No problems. So you have this anon. Relentlessly the flooding of <coughs> blood is going on with this glucose. We know we, we, we need to have only 5 grams of glucose in our blood at any given point of time. But then the way we are eating, oh you drink Pepsi, Shahrukh Khan comes, then another Khan, what is his name, Amir Khan comes and says Coke, 
and then Salman Khan, I come from the top, and thumbs up. All these guys are selling 40 grams of sugar in 100 ml of this stupid uh, so-called beverages or whatever. On top of it, as if it is not enough, summer comes, you all have to have the fruit juices. Each fruit juice has got 50 grams of glucose, more than the Pepsi. And, and all this health, orange juice, this juice, that juice, you go to the air, airport, you are traveling, they keep pouring and giving. They are just dumping glucose, 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 sugar, sugar. And no fiber, no fiber, no fiber. I want to tell ten times. No fiber, no fiber. No. So your rectum is out of whack. So no shaking, the formation of bone is completely out of whack. So people go and try to shake there, nothing comes out, comes out, and again go, again, again. So people actually are now going, visiting the toilet, I mean the bathroom, three times. They go, it doesn't start. I don't know. I, after eating, I, I feel like going again. Again you go. And it's some little bit comes and nothing comes out. Again come back. So people are going on three to four times. You have to shake once in the morning, maybe once in the night. That's it. This is all in balance. So the glucose, what do you do? You are flooding. After eating four idlis or one paratha, two kulchas, not fellows, huh? From morning to evening they want to eat kulchas, parathas, and I said, what are you eating? Paratha. Afternoon, paratha. Right? Paratha. <laughs> and then along with it some potato. Paratha, potato, paratha, potato. Lassi. Lassi. What is lassi? No. It is buttermilk and sugar. <laughs> Actually, now you get addicted to this sugar. It, these are all names. Let's see this and that. First you want sugar. And as if that is not enough, the whole world is now wanting something called chocolate. Theobroma cocoa. That name itself tells there is a alkaloid in the chocolate. Theobromine. Just like your caffeine your nicotine, your morphine. Yes. So, you see now the whole world is addicted to chocolate. Why? Theobromine, an alkaloid. So, tons and tons of chocolates are And now you have desert, chocolate, desert, you know. I, I go to Chamaraj Nagar, which is the most uh, remote uh, villages of our uh, Karnataka, no? one of the underdeveloped and not developed and all that kind. Villages. Now they are eating strawberry and chocolate smoothie. <laughs> For managers, they are serving in these plastic cups and plastic cups people are eating. I didn't want to talk to you about plastic. I think I don't want to digress. That plastic is a monster that is killing the planet. The water bottles, the milk bottles, and the pads in the name of hygiene, sanitary pads. The whole planet is killing. Yes, sir. In fact, the babies, they should not urinate on you. Just. <laughs> so instead of, if you are feeding the babies with the plastic, Plastic is not just going from here, it's going from bottom, bottom of it. In fact, it is the reason for cancers. I think 6% of it is due to this uh, patch. Many cervical cancer is... <coughs> Actually, I don't want to talk about plastic. It takes another session for me. So, I will... I will with a lot of effort, I stop myself not to digress. It is very difficult not to digress. Um, yeah, that apart. Now come back to the glucose. So we have loading minimum of 150 grams of glucose into our blood on a daily basis, whether you are a small baby or a grown-up. 
coffee, tea, donuts, this, that, you know, all kinds of, and rice and wheat itself, 100 grams of rice, you'll dump 40 grams of glucose. So all cal we have calculated comes around 150 grams. So now, okay, okay, we need glucose, we have to burn and then live. I mean, so why are you not happy about glucose going into your blood, but it's going into your fry. That is the thing. It's accumulated. What does it do if there's a lot of it? It starts absorbing water. So you have potential of water created. Because now the blood wants to suck all the water from various cells, wherever it is. So then you get parched. Then you get thirsty. So what does liver, pancreas, all other endocrine system does? And this is not the right thing to do. Anyway, you fellow, without asking us, we are dumping this much glucose. So we have to do something. The liver goes into extra work and starts converting into glycogen. So what it does, it again starts packing. What is glycogen? It's nothing but packing the glycose into complex carbohydrate again. It's a different form. So plants do some way. The animal bodies, not only humans, even other animals also make glycogen. So that's how glycogen is basis for fat preparation. So you have excess glycogen, you start making fat. So you, you started making fat. I am not talking about proteins. No, that comes a little later. We have fat. So excess glucose is converted to fat. And then enough fat is there because already people started putting on weight. The bulging of system. So, uh, in Telugu, there is a small joke. When I was pregnant, I was a lifelong friend. This is what is happening. And once it happens, it's difficult to get rid of this. Because you are eating these things. How can you lose your weight? You cannot because you are producing fat in this. In, in, I mean, unrepairable damage. <laughs> As if that is not enough, we have still excess. It converts into cholesterol. It converts into triglyceride. It converts into rheumatic factors. Everything is going on. Still you have excess glucose. So the system gets sick of transforming this glucose into different things and says, hey, I am done. It's enough. So it takes the glucose and dumps it on hemoglobin itself. So you have HbA1c. So it should have been 5, it becomes 6, 7, 8. So lo and behold, you are diabetic. It's not amount of glucose excess in the blood that you measure. It is this average of hemoglobin. Because hemoglobin regenerates in the once in 3 months. I mean the blood cells keep coming back as new. And the old can get recycled by spleen and gallbladder, liver, all these things put together, recycle the hemoglobin. So the new hemoglobin that cell is coming, already glucose is there, just like your vaccinations. Baby comes out, you are ready with the shots. Just like the glucose is there, the hemoglobin, poor new hemoglobin cell is coming, stamp it with glucose. It's like immigration. <laughs> so you are with already glucose on the top. Hemoglobin should actually have oxygen or carbon dioxide. <coughs> Once it goes into the cell, the energy is gone and it just catches the carbon dioxide, comes back and then you exit. But now what do we have in between? We have glucose in it. So it, it neither can take oxygen nor can take carbon dioxide. So once you are diabetic, you start becoming Restless because you cannot breathe properly because oxygen that is taken inside is not being absorbed by the blood. So, so many disturbances. So, the system is going haywire. So, once you become diabetic, lot of bad things happen. Your blood glucose is stopping. So, the hemoglobin preparation, the synthesis gets deranged. So, because that is getting rigid to adjust that, the white blood cells can be different. And then, because it has to happen, everything has to be in balance. One is getting screwed up, all others get screwed up. 
so your immunity starts falling. So once you become diabetic, you have battery of these antibiotics, nothing happens. So no problem, we'll amputate your not leg, cross the finger. <laughs> then, little bit. Then, because once you can do it for a year, that's all. No, no. Step by step. <laughs> so in Bangalore, 1995, 97, I think, where just when I went to India back, they opened up something called amputation hospital. They were amputating eight legs per day. Now, it is almost 800 beds are there and they are amputating, I don't know how many. That is the ratio, I mean the increase of diabetic patients. Now almost every other fellow is diabetic. Not only in India, everywhere. You see, that's why I call this imbalance of glucose is the most deadly one. And it's because your sugar cane, your rice, and your it is spoiled the planet, it is spoiled the health of the whole universe. So these three imbalances put together has actually been the responsible reasons for all of us being unhealthy. But then what do these guys want to take care of you by? This medicine. Whether it is allopathy, naturopathy, tartopathy, all pathies not working, go to Tirupati, become Draupati. Nothing happens. Because the problem of you becoming healthy is nothing to do with these tablets. You have all theories, this, that, all that. But the problem is very simple. <coughs> you have to correct this. And that can happen only through what? The food. So then you have diet plans coming up. This diet, that diet, that diet. You do this diabetes goes, you do this heart blood cell, you do this. Nothing is going to work. You can have stunt, another stunt, another, you can do a lot of stunts. That's all. <laughs> stunt and stunt. Nothing is going to happen. So the real problem actually is you have lost health in the kitchen. So your kitchen has to be set right. You go back to the kitchen, cook the right things. Yeah, bases are not covered, but you want to play the baseball. We do not know what bases are. These are the three important bases. And then the protein is another very important base. Now all at a sudden everyone is declaring, you need protein, you need protein, you need protein. Where is it? It is in the meat, it is in the air. Now it is in soya bean. Because they are able to make genetically modified soya bean with the glyphosate. You know how it has come about? This soya bean is... All the stories till now is one side and soya bean is another side. <coughs> Americans were fighting Vietnam. Those guys were fighting actually through the tunnels. But these guys thought they are fighting from the forest. Gorilla war they call it. So they said we will just defoliate the whole forest. So they accidentally got one chemical called 2,4-dichlorophenol. It is a, called the Agent Orange. So they took it in aeroplanes and then sprayed it. Whole forest. So what it does, 2,4-dichlorophenol, actually inhibits one enzyme and it makes chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is just replica of our red blood cells hemoglobin. So what's the difference between chlorophyll is yellow, or sorry green, and you are saying it is like blood, blood is red. But the whole body structure is the same, the center of this hemoglobin, it's called protoporphyrin, you have magnesium, it becomes chlorophyll, you have iron, you have hemoglobin. So that's why when you actually take any green juice, your blood count can increase because everything is ready 
you just have to replace the magnesium with iron. That's why when I say when someone comes bloodlessness, you just take curry leaves and put it in buttermilk and daily drink for three weeks, your hemoglobin count increases. Because absolutely the same, protoporphyrin ring is the same. And what is protoporphyrin? You have nitrogen rings for and then in the center you create that wonderful slot for the cation to sit. Very simple structure, very beautiful structure. Awesome, actually, if you are a biochemist, it is the most beautiful thing to look at. Crystal structure and all. Okay, wonderful thing. Chlorophyll, hemoglobin. So now what do you do? The process of making the biosynthesis called protoporphyrin ring, one of the enzymes is blocked by this chemical. So what it means that you cannot make the protoporphyrin ring proper. That's how you defoliate all the leaves when you spray this. So what does that mean? If that chemical comes into your body, you will screw up your hemoglobin synthesis. And then what did we do? They, they graduated. This 2,4-dichlorophenol is not soluble in water. So with this clue, slowly these guys develop what is called glyphosate, which is soluble in water. And in nature, the poisons are always soluble in fat, not in water. Why? Because it rains. <coughs> and if there is poison that is soluble in water, the whole system gets poisonous. That's why even when snakes die, you don't die, you know, the poison doesn't come into it because you cannot dissolve it in water. The same way there are a lot of plants which have poisonous materials. It keeps raining, they also get, but nothing happens to us because it doesn't dissolve in water. So, poisons in nature, by nature, is fat soluble. That's why we tell you don't add milk and then boil some things. If there is some poison, you will get it. That's why coffee and tea are not good for you. <laughs> <laughs> whatever caffeine is, as if it is not enough, whatever the other things are, that's also. So, fat, using fat, if you do cooking, so you should be thoroughly knowledgeable about what you are cooking. That's why don't eat oily food because anything can happen. When you know gongora is very good, by chance a gongora something has urinated, some lizard has gone, and there is some poison deposited, and then you cook it oil, you are making it soluble and your system gets oil. So you want to cook things first steam and then don't add oil separately. That's why in India, we have uh, what is called tadka. Hindi ne tadka, the pope one tam telgulo, tiruva tadka. So this is the logic. And it comes from understanding nature. And then if you want to have oil, you can actually add after everything. So if you want to cook, but then what are we doing? Fry, burger. What? Everything. Potato chips, or fried French fries, finger fries. <laughs> and that's what we are doing literally. See, the method of cooking has a logic. So, our ancient wisdom is so wonderful, so scientific. And all oils are not bad. We need oil. Because it is the oils that make our brain, that make our liver, that make the kidneys soft parts. So you need the right oils. Fat is important for us. When if the baby has to grow properly, right fat material is important. <coughs> so what are you when you take all these diversified food materials, your body is being made. And we are not what we are. Six months back, Khadar is not the same as now, but I made everything is regenerated. Punar Nawab. We are becoming new every time. Of course, hemoglobin gets for three months. Our skin, much less. And each cell has some timeline. 
So all said and done, in a matter of two years, you are getting actually rebirth. I mean, you do not know actually. You still think it's you, but it's not you. It's new you. It's new you. <laughs> That's. In fact, there is a plant called Punarnava, which can make your kidney new. So you have kidney problems, you take the juice or the decoction. That's why anything you boil, don't touch oils. <laughs> Only water. And just filter and take that. That can actually repair. So there is a plant called Punarnava, which just grows as a chapal park. Very, very gross. So all kidneys can be safe on this planet. Just take that decoction once a week. All issues related, it takes care of. Yeah, even nephrotic, these destroyed nephrons can be regenerated. So we have had you use this logic and then gave ampli of these five grains and then these decoctions. In six weeks to nine weeks, the creatinine, nine, drops down to two. You can re-invent, rediscover, regenerate, whatever you do, the process you call these things. This is the beauty of nature. <coughs> but then what do we do? We kaput these kidneys by saying you need lot of protein, lot of protein. Six percent is all that you need. And what protein? What is protein after all? Where does it get prepared? Meat doesn't get... You don't have proteins. The real protein is synthesized by dicotyledon plants. As much as you have the real glucose prepared by this Poyesi family, grasses. You have dicots like moong dal, rajma beans. Soya bean is also one of them. But it used to have 24 percent. Now with all this modification, they have made 36 of two. And so this, see why I'm confusing you? I'm not confusing you. I'm trying to connect all the things. So this 2,4 diclofenol now became glyphosate. So glyphosate is used to make soya bean. What is glyphosate? So what you do is you spray this herbicide so that other plants do not grow. But then even the soya bean doesn't grow because it kills the soya bean plant also. So I have some other trick up my sleeves called genetic modifications. I take an enzyme which can actually destroy glyphosate. So I put that gene in soya bean. Or I can put it in the grass. So if I spray this, the grass doesn't die, the soya bean plant doesn't die, all the others die. Now, I can do that and I can make the soya bean. What is soya bean? It's a dicotyledon. What is dicotyledon? The difference between dicotyledon and plants and other plants is that they harbor, <coughs> just like us harboring microbes in our guts, these plants harbor microbes that fix nitrogen from the air in their roots. They are called nodules. They are a particular kind of bacteria. Wonderful thing it does. And then that nitrogen is fixed, like say you understand chemical called urea, just something like that. And so that is made a soluble thing and slowly the plant takes up. And then you have what is called, with carbohydrate synthesized, it breaks down slowly and starts making, incorporating the nitrogen into that, and you call amino acids. There is an amine, NH2 and COOH, in between some chains. Various distances, various kinds of chains, you have different amino acids. It's got 26, I guess. Huh? So you have different amino acids, you keep linking them each one from amine to carboxylic acid. You form a chain of amino acids. This is called protein. And that actually is the real protein. Who is making it? Who is making it? The plants, the dicotyledons. So this animals graze on you eat and that actually is your food. You incorporate these amino acids and you make a different set of chain, different combinations, what is required for your body. So this protein is transformed from plant protein to animal. But then you eat animal, 
but actually there is a problem because we are designed to transform the plant protein into animal protein. But you eat animal protein, this process is not necessary. You just want it. So you are screwed up there also. So where, what protein you are supposed to eat? Plant protein. But then we all have become omnivorous because we love protein. You eat, oh you, are, you should eat egg, you should eat fish, you should eat this. Oh this is good, that is good. But in its true sense, you are not supposed to take this. Our ancestors knew. They said the first time in the world. Of course, we have screwed up. Something happened and we ate meat and everywhere, everyone started eating. It's very nice, tasty. Accidentally in a forest, some meat was burned and then they ate and then they started hunting and all. It is a huge time, you know, history. But then all at a sudden, some fellow in India recognized this. Oh, it's a mistake has happened. So we all should be eating vegetarian food. So the whole vegetarian concept evolved sometime, I don't know when, 10,000 years ago. So, Sanatana, please don't eat meat. Then, in fact, it worked out so much that the whole India was a completely vegetarian, almost vegetarian system existed. All over India, starting from there. So, if there is any country on this planet which pronounced that human race should be vegetarian, it is perfect. That is the story of meat. So, but then what? The whole world now believes that you should eat meat because you have got vitamin B12. It's there in the meat only. But actually vitamin B12 came from the microbes. The gut microbes. You have screwed up your gut microbes. So vitamin B12, oh take meat, eat meat, eat meat. So the whole world now wants to eat meat because B12 is there. Not only B12, there are many more chemicals that human race, the so-called scientists, till today cannot fathom. There are many more wonderful elements of this microbial and man living cells symbiotically, producing thousand more chemicals that are required for our wellness. And that's what we did. We don't need to know what they do. We just re-establish the balance. Lo and behold, we have had wonderful results, so-called muscular dystrophy patients. What is muscular dystrophy? It is a coordination problem between muscles and nerves. So the muscles start leaning away. And then, if it happens to the muscles of heart, your heart beat starts slowing down. So they are called progressive diseases. I am coming to the end. I don't want to take more time. I think I have talked a lot of time. And a lot more things I would love to share. A lot of wonderful experiences with various kinds of diseases. But then I want to tell the toughest. And then the remaining things, you can all go back to my various YouTube lectures various points of time I have mentioned different kinds of things. And this is the latest. We have done many, but this is the latest and most wonderful. It's, it gives me so much joy to share this. Um, I don't even know the patient. I have not met him. But he came up on Facebook and then just before I took flight, the day before he came and met me, and he just wanted to touch my feet, and which is a bad thing. <laughs> you don't want to touch my feet. Just touch my feet, I said. My heartbeat fell to 40. And then the doctors, in fact, he visited America also to see if something can be done. They said nothing can be done. If 40 is a matter of maybe one year, one and a half year, your heart is operating. So be prepared, fixed. And then he, everything, every door is closed. He was, he's a Bombay, all big hospitals he has visited and luckily he has some money and means he's a rich person. Nothing helps. So what he does, he cannot put two, three steps. And it has been happening for the last 15 years. Now he has come to the stage where he cannot put two, three steps, he'll collapse. And the thighs are becoming thin and because here the problem is spread to this place also. So 40 is now, and so nine months back, I happened to go to Mumbai, IIT Bombay, I gave a lecture, he happened to hear my lecture, and then 
we also gave him a protocol, which we will give you, all of you, the protocols for various diseased conditions. I will just talk to you about that in, in, in a moment. So, he started following the protocol. Protocol is nothing but taking the right oils, and oils, not your refined oils, all in plastic dabas, and this refined oil is your uh, diesel uh, industry produces mineral oils, and so you have olive oil, tons and tons of it, everyone can drink. I don't know where the olive trees are, but then the whole Mumbai alone consumes billion liters. Huh? Not adulterated. Adulterated is something you have something and then add it here. <laughs> this is outright <laughs> transformed. It's a mineral oil, you have a little chemical for flavor, little color, and then the uh, consistency, you have all the chemicals. So if I have one kilo of flavor, I can make 10,000 liters. So now, if in Bombay you order, you want olive oil, they will deliver in 10 days. <laughs> However much you want. I mean, Bombay alone consumes so much. And where are the olive trees? <laughs> Three kilos you need to put one liter of oil. So billion liter means three billion kilos of oil. Where is this oil? It's not there. Absolutely not. But then everyone is drinking. Oh, olive oil is go. Oh my God, oh my God, acid is there. This acid, all this created humbug. And you are all drinking olive oil. Olive oil is very good for health. So pour it before, after, under, bare. <laughs> See, this is the problem. So where did I digest? No, wrong. So the real oils, Niger seed oil, coconut oil, start actually connecting this coordination. Things happen. So we gave three spoons of Niger seed oil and coconut oil and sesame seed oil. Actually not, you can actually have mustard oil, no problem. If you are a South fellow, you can have sesame seed oil. Because whatever locally is grown is good for you. So he is in the middle, Bombay. He didn't know. He called me. He called me some of the group. What oil do you take? Take both oils. <laughs> I am trying to... This is exactly what has happened. So he started eight months back. Actually, I think January. And uh, he is now walking 10 kilometers non-stop. <laughs> and he is swimming. Don't touch water. We don't touch water. Now he can swim four kilometers non-stop. And his heartbeat, for all the dismay of all these so-called doctors, is now 68. So it is genetic disorder, progressive disease. Lo and behold, nothing is a barrier for if your food is right. So. The ultimate conclusion, I actually want to end, and a lot more things I want to share, but then it's already 8.20, and... Uh, eat right. Not eat right. If your food is right, no medicine is required. And if your food is wrong, no medicine works. <laughs> Thank you. And also additional information will be there. The, a lot of information will be uh, put it on the, our task website. So you all have the access to the website. So you can share information from there. Uh, and also now we are going to a small felicitation. It doesn't mean it's ending, but he is going to continue the lecture after the felicitation. So everyone please uh, stay. And also there is, uh, no, we arranged a little healthy snack kind of thing, uh, food, so you can take it later. Just 200 liters. That means if you, if you give me one kilo of sugar, that is 28,000 liters of water, I can produce 28 into 5. 28 into 5. That's approximately 140 kilos of grain. And this grain, if you soak in the night and cook slowly in the morning in a mud boil, 
each kilo can be eaten by 10 people. That means 140 to 10. 1,400 people's food you are gobbling up with one kilo of sugar. And 10,000 liters means accordingly you have one five, five kilos you can produce with 1,000 liters. So 10 means 10 into 5, 50 kilos. 50 kilos is 500 people's food. That means if you eat one kilo of wheat, that means how many people eat in five ki one kilo of wheat? Five people will finish. Whatever kulcha, chapati and all that, five people. One kilo of wheat can be enough and it is enough for five people. That means five people is equivalent to 500 people's food. So 500 by 5 is equal to 100. That means one person's food is now equal to 100 people's food. So now what is the world doing in the name of sustainable? I mean, then of food, you are eating wheat. And what should we be eating? 100 people's food you are taking away in form of one person. So the natural resources that we are consuming, just forget about all the health benefits of the millets, which I will talk to you in short time. Just on environmental aspect, just water is not going to be there that everyone is aware now. There's no water coming into the future for us. So what do you want to be eating? So just for the sake of saving water, so people keep talking, close the tap, don't do this, don't do that. So if you just stop eating wheat, you have saved thousand times more. And the rice, almost same number. And you come to meat, that the whole world is busy eating. So much so, that the world is killing all the animals in the ocean. There are no whales, there are no sharks left anymore. You are counting on fingertips. It's all for meat and that's what your technology has done for you. Without technology, go and stand in front of a whale. You will disappear into nothingness. It just blows you away with its breath. It doesn't want to even intend any harm, you will be gone. But then with the technology that you have, all kinds of weapons and just killing lakhs of animals. And that's all for, in the name of protein, in the name of being healthy, which is actually not true. I have explained to you very clearly how and why. So now if we decide to eat millets, the whole planet, and why it is all human race food? Because these grains can be grown anywhere. They are both local as well as universal. All these five grains can be grown anywhere on the planet. Without any angama, no water, no irrigation, no fertilizers, nothing is required. Just give me the water that you are using for Orissa. I can make the food for the whole India. And then give me Madhya Pradesh and Orissa, I can feed China and India. And you give me Telangana along with it, I will feed the whole world. Wow. <laughs> and that's sustainable, this wonderful grain are. So we have actually been working with thousands of farmers. We created a jungle out of barren land and then the symbiotic, giving no requirement of whatsoever inputs, we can produce food for 100 people. All the things that you require, which we have done, demonstrated, we have produced just in the rainy season, nearby Mysuru, called Bidrahali, seven acres of land, we have transformed three and a half to four acres to a forest, and the forest sustains us, and we don't require anything else. Just four rains, we grow 32 different varieties of food materials that we consume.
so hundred people can happily live, and that is what is called sustainable. No input whatsoever, and that can go on for generation after generation, generation after generation, because our soil has been fertilizing itself for the last ten years, and you just go and touch the soil. In fact, you want to lie down on that place. It's so beautiful smell, wonderful smell. So we have transformed a barren, desert-like land into wonderful, fertilized, beautiful smelling Kannadadalli Kasturi Antara. Mannu ne vasana Kasturi. Actually, that is the real Kasturi smell. Manni na Kasturi suvasne niu grani sube. Barri bai, bandhu nod bai. It's actually better than the real forest soil. That's how we have transformed. So we have been teaching thousands of farmers on a monthly basis. We conduct two-day sessions, three-day sessions as to how to produce these grains without harming the nature. In fact, we are actually furnishing, giving back, giving back to the nature. And in fact, right now, as we speak, just before I came, in our forest, we have leopards, we have bears coming in, and we have lots of honeybees, fresh new honeybees. So people also, sir, can I take honey? Honey is good. Well, I didn't speak about sweet. I'll talk to you at the end. So these wonderful grains. So the fiber content, how it is built. When you take harvest the grass, you allow the grain to dry along with the grass. Then the final coating of lignans gets onto the grain. So you dry the grain, dehusk, then you soak and eat the lignans, the ultimate PMF, the proton motive force. Actually is in a pool of electrons. Lignans is the precursor of wood. So that's how it maintains all the balance. Electronic waste that you create in your metabolism is all taken by the lignans. And that is what is actually the fiber of these wonderful grains, soluble and insoluble. The soluble fiber of different grains cleans up your different parts of the body. And that's how it imparts beautiful health for you. So now what do you need? For being healthy, you have to clean up your body on a daily basis. So it's not just good enough going around and eating glucose and producing energy. But that also produces toxic metabolic waste. And if you do not remove daily basis, you become sick. So even if you are eating millets, slow and steady regulation of glucose. Despite that being so, if you do not clean your toxic waste that is produced on a daily basis, you are going to be sick. So lo and behold, what God does? It gives that lignans, extra things, nowhere else you get to clean up your body. So the lignans of these wonderful brains, little millet, clean up your genital organs. So all your hormone imbalance, your PCOD, your this, that, Fibroid in the breast, fibroid in the uterus, a whole uterus is coming down, you know, whole, uh, just push it up and do this, do that. All those things tightened up in no time if you eat little bit. Why it does it do that? Because it has this wonderful fiber which is directing itself into the job of cleaning your vital genital organs. Of course, that's for women and for men who are wanting to have sperm, because no sperm, even regeneration of sperm, ajuspermia, and various kinds of conditions of sperm not being produced. Even if they are produced, they are crooked. Even if they are crooked, they cannot move. All these conditions, they have different needs. All that can be wiped out in a matter of six months, feed three days of little millet and the remaining millets each day. In fact, there is a lot of tables produced, protocols, which we have not fed here. And this is finger millet, okay? Uh, so can, if someone has control, can you just get and show the 
and I mean old time. I mean Salmon. Old. This is the little millet I have talked about. Now wooden, barnyard millet, as I told you, Japanese millet, German millet, Russian millet. This fiber, it has 10% fiber. And Samanu has got 9.8% fiber. In fact, we have wonderful pictures of the crop and all that in the literature you can go and see. Yeah. And I will talk to you about Bajra, Ragi, Jowar. They are actually having the fiber not enough. It is between 1.2 and 3.6. So the ratio is in double digits. So what it means is ragi has got say 65% of carbohydrate. There's 3.6% of fiber. So when you divide it is approximately 20 or 25. Whereas these five grains, it's all in single digits. So kodo millet. So barnyard millet, when you slowly digest and get this soluble and insoluble, the rectum and large intestine is going to be taking the insoluble fiber and does the job at the final final check for quality and quantity there. That's what is this wonderful grains are doing for you. And the, the barnyard millet fiber does cleaning up of all your soft parts. That is your liver, your kidney, and your pancreas, and your spleen. You know what is spleen? Spleen is actually the blood circulation, the final supervisor. Quality control fellow, spleen. So if you screw up your spleen, you don't have control over quality of your blood. And that is the problem, splenomegaly. In fact, cancer of spleen and all that. All that can be just washed away in no time with this barnyard. And then codomillet. Codomillet, what it does, this pinkish called arikalu, the top one. Huh? It has its fiber directing itself to clean up your bone marrow. So what is bone marrow? Production of immunity, production of red blood cells, white blood cells, platelets, plasma, everything related to your immunity. So all this so-called H1N1, H5N1, Dengue, Pango, Chicken Munya, Chuka, Punka, all this so-called viral infections can be completely dealt with if you are eating a recovery, code of it. So, lot of typhoid, all this Vishama Jwaragalos, all poisonous fevers, you can actually deal with, if, if you have that pill, you want to feed, humbly of Arikalu for your kids or for yourself. So, and, and it so happens you can even clean up your cancerous conditions of blood cancer, leukemia, AML, CML, all kinds of names, thalassemia, you keep it, just transfusing blood every week. We have cured hundreds of kids with these conditions. Within six months, they don't need to have any transfusion. And before, because of hemoglobin not being there, you have breathing trouble, this trouble, infection troubles, all that disappear in a matter of six months to two years. Arikalu. So Arikalu, three days remaining, grains each day one in a week. So you keep rotating the food. So, so depending upon the disease that you have, you want to choose your grain for a larger period of time in a week. But, but you need all the grains because you have other parts too. So this is the reason why you want to eat all these five grains because all these five grains put together are cleaning your body on a weekly basis or 10 days one. So if you want to be healthy, you want to eat all the five grains. Don't mix. Why mix? You should not mix. If you mix all the five, you can only eat this much. So the fiber content of each quality to clean up your different organs becomes very less. It's like this. Chamundi betta is there in Mysore. You have thousand steps. So if you climb thousand steps, you will see Chamundi. But every day you climb 300 and come down. 300 come down. 300 come down. You can climb 10 years, you will not see Chamundi. So that's how it, this is. Because if you mix everything, you are like climbing 300 steps and coming down. Because the enough is not there. So you eat kodo for three days, you clean up your bone marrow. You eat 
foxtail millet, it takes up your lungs and nerves. So that's how all these differently abled, all nervous disorders, paralysis, Alzheimer's. When did I marry you? Are you my wife? <laughs> that is the problem with Alzheimer's. They don't know who they are, where they are. And that rate is increasing in America. So I believe now 16 people are so. And in India also we are almost 3 or 4 out of 100 are Alzheimer's disease. Because you are eating the same rubbish as these guys are eating, you are going to get the same. You are importing everything. This is, a this is the problem. So all these nervous related can be wiped out in a matter of say. We have cured hundreds of Parkinson's problems. They were not able to sign, now they are driving cars. In fact, in the bank they need to get notary for each and every time. Now the, the our bank fellows, hundreds of fellows, completely cured. No problems whatsoever. No problems whatsoever. So they have to eat foxtail millet and so brown top millet. The, the ratio, the lowest, because there's 12.5 fiber content, it has got a wonderful capacity to clean from your mouth to ants. So that means it is the base. So all things are going through your thing. That itself is not all right. How do you get it right? So you have a gastric problem, carcass problem, this problem, that all things can be wiped out in a matter of six months if you eat ground top millet for three days and the remaining each one. Andu kola. You understand now each millet, how and why you need to eat the way you need to eat. So don't eat all mixed. This is multigrain. Multi, what is it? Multigrain. <laughs> These are business fellows. So all when they are processing, everything is fallen down. They want not to waste. That also. So see, this is good for you. This is good for you. This is good. so all the mix is much better than. <laughs> see the logic they are using to fool you. It's not right. So never eat anything mixed. So don't mix all the grains and then say it's good. No, it's not good. The same thing. Oh, fruit salad, this salad, all mix, everything mix. This, this Western culture is everything mix. Don't mix things. Eat things because in nature things come separately. There are seasons. So potato season, banana season, jackfruit season, mango season. Because God knows you have to eat individually. So don't keep mixing everything. That's not the right. But then we have in the name of science, produce carrot all the 12 months. And that is wrong. So please go back, learn what is the season of the production of each vegetable and all separately. So in that particular month, eat that more. So you have to plant. Of course, you are getting a plant uh, all through. Right? And not all through. Any time, any day, night and day, you all frozen, throw into the that's not the way you eat. Okra, it has a season. So because all vegetables do not come in winter, all vegetables do not come. So you should know what is what. And that knowledge is completely evaporated because of this industrial food culture. And it has been so wonderful if you visit different places on this planet, different vegetables, different timing. It's, it's amazing. So all these things we need to back, get back the human consciousness and there is enormous amount of knowledge that is being lost in each, it's not only the animals and plants that are, we are losing, we are losing the knowledge and that is much more so uh, in India because we have plenty, I don't think any country on this planet has and so much information that we have and it's so wonderful, actually it has been, uh, I mean, it's a nerve-wracking pleasure for me to learn these things because after I went back, all 24 hours I have been involved in learning, 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 learning. And people actually have been telling I have been teaching, no, I am not teaching, actually I have been learning all the time. So many wonderful things, it's all just, I am awestruck, I am just being, you know, like a kid, I am just, Flabbergasted the amount of knowledge that we have with various places, various kinds of, in fact, just cooking so beautifully in different places. 
wonderful. And the logic and the science of how they make, why they make, how do they make. And you know, just for example, you know, when you heat the oil, all these so-called carcinogenic things, you can just nullify in a moment if you just splash mustard. That's how? Yeah. See? Because there's a chemical thiocin, when it just takes away all the superoxide. Turmeric. Like this, I mean, just, I, I just wanted to share my journey and knowledge. I mean, no, I don't say it's not mine for your kind information. I'm just learning. But it just splashes. It's so wonderful. I'm only trying to understand it in the so-called modern science. Also. But it's a wonderful things are there. And then, that's what these wonderful grains are all about. You said you talk about honey. Honey? Honey, honey, I'll talk. I'll talk to you, honey. Honey about honey. Can I ask the related question that what you explain so far? So if you explain like this is oriented, you have to take one type of thing. Actually, it is other way around. Yeah, but if it is for a general person. That's right. Everyone should eat all these five grains. What is the order of days? Once in two days or once in three days. It's it's not very strict, but. What happens is people tend to get liking to one. I like kodo, so keep eating kodo. Then what happens? You keep cleaning your own leaf, what matter? Other things, you'll become sick. So I started eating kodo, I, 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 my lungs, because your breathing can get, because you are not feeling that. That's the thing. The thing is we are not getting proud of it. Yes, you will get it. You have to grow. <laughs> See, we cannot supply you guys, you know. You need to grow here. And we will give you seeds. Really? In fact, that's what we have been doing. I go to every place, I tell them. We we'll give you information. We we'll train you how to grow. Because you have to grow there and eat there only. It's unsustainable if I... Of course, I told you in my lecture for fun that you give me water, I'll give, feed the whole globe. Everyone has to I cannot go and feed the globe. <laughs> See, that's the problem. See, we will uh, we'll give you the information. I don't want to even teach. Give you the information. So everyone is capable of doing things. Anyway. Anywhere. Anywhere. Even in cold weather. Yeah, five more minutes. Five more minutes. Okay. I'm done actually. I've given you all the information about the millets. And honey, honey, there are no bees. And all the honey that you are getting is all focus focus. <laughs> Nothing is there, it is other than sugar, syrup, in different forms. Fructose. That's it. Not even fructose, it's actually your uh, sugar cane syrup only. It's flooded with glucose. Only. But they say, just like your olive oil, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Most of them take it all. Yeah, absolutely. So, honey bees, you have in your forest, collect the honey, it's okay, no problem. But in a plastic bottle, two kilos of honey, please don't touch it. And all these five-star hotels you go, oh, honey is good for you. It's nothing, no good for you. So they are all fooling you. So if, I told you, if you stop drinking milk, we can close down half hospitals. If you stop drinking coffee and tea, we can close down another 25%. And if you stop eating meat, we can close 100%. We need some of them for ICU emergency. So we we'll open back 5%. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, yeah, sweet is something that. So how, we all have been now addicted to sugar and we want sweets. You know, without sweets, how is life? But God has given enough called palm jaggery. The palm trees, palm is, we have millions of them on this planet here. Tati chattu, Eeta chattu, fish type, jilaka chattu. There are five different kinds of palm trees which are growing freely. You don't need to do anything. You just have to start making good, good, that's called jaggery. And it is good because it is fructose based. So you eat good, 
as much as you want, but don't over it. Everything has to be balanced. And how do you get balanced with these grains? You cannot eat more because the fiber so spreads just beautiful. So you eat this much, you are done. In fact, I eat in the morning, I don't need to eat at all. And many people think it is not getting digested because you are not hungry. You are not hungry because it is releasing glucose in quantum. Slow and steady. And that is good. In fact, me and Raj made idlis and ate in the morning in the plane and no food is required for us till in the night. In fact, I can just see through myself, I mean see myself through even the night, many days. So in Kannada there is one saying, Oppa Tunduva Yogi, Ippa Tunduva Yogi, Uva Tunduva Yogi, Nanko Yogi. So, eat twice, you are good. Morning once, evening. But then what of this doctor's telling, gastric problem? Every two hours eat, 8 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 12 o'clock. No other work for us. That's why you order on Jomato, keep eating. You understand the problem? So, like this, the methods, the ways we are doing things, all has been commercialized. Instead of being scientific, we have become, that's why I call industrial food culture, just consuming culture. We are consuming the planet. Whereas, this conserving culture, we need to shift. So from consuming culture to conserving culture, industrial food culture to ecological model. So we are now all living in economic model. Start thinking about living in an ecological model. Please, it is very important. Why it is important? If you guys do it here, then people will follow. So I, actually I blabber around so much in India. Now some fellow I come here and fellow calls, hey, eat five minutes. No, all people start eating. <laughs> That's why I come here now and then. Because you guys call up and tell once, all people start listen. listen. It's not listen, it is happy. <laughs> they want to do whatever you do, they want to do. So if you change here, <coughs> things start happening here. And then we need to change these Americans too. Those guys are suffering more than us actually. But they don't know that they are suffering. And that is the problem. <laughs> so through you, we can tend into their consciousness. So you start growing and you become disease free. Then they will say, how? How is this happening? And they will start taking the cue and then things start happening. And that is the whole point. And that's why I said, when you said I am doing service, no, it's my responsibility. Thank you again. Thank you. 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 Thank you very much, Dr. Garu. So whatever you call service and responsibility, you have opened all our eyes. Hope all our friends and the community will follow your guidelines for a better and good health. Thank you very much, sir. And cdg1.org website, wholesome tales website. Just types S I R I J E E V A N. Very good on their website. Yeah, and then contact Raj through uh, California Telugu Sangam. All the information will flow into your smartphone, but don't become dumb watching that. Become wise. Thank you. Thank you. And all the information about different diseases, rheumatism, uh, HIV, SLE. SLE is also healed without any problem. Very difficult diseases. All the protocols and how to cook, umbrella, how bio are uploaded. So you can make gulab jamun, you can make all things that you want and enjoy. No no need to be This is not a diet plan. You eat well, be well. That's it. Very simple. So all the information, whatever you require is given and there are a lot of WhatsApp groups which Raj is going to open one in your uh, Telugu Association. 
and everyone can join. non telugu people also can join because the information is there in Hindi, in English, in Kannada, in Tamil, everything is there. So please join and share with all the others and we'll all be okay, I hope. Yeah, that is the hope. We can change the world. If you change yourself and change your kitchen, things start happening. Thank you, sir. So, and once again, our sincere apologies from task for not accommodating everyone by chairs and all. Thanks for understanding and your cooperation. So, next time, definitely, when Dr. Sab is coming, we will book a thousand audience hall with a big, like a five hours. I think, you know, three hours is also not enough. It's people like interesting and going on. Thank you very much, sir. Due to time constraints, we have to stop here at this point. And now, I would like to invite my colleagues, EC. EC members, please come. And also, Board of Trustees, Bayapa, Malik Bantu. And also, everyone can sit now. Just uh, Dr. Sam, registration only. And then we have a uh, small dinner uh, kind of thing. And then we can discuss. And we have time also. And also, we like to invite our Board of Trustees, Subha Gopur Karu. And any other uh, devotees, please come here. Please come here. Prasad Pabdi Sigaru. All other devotees, please come. EC first. Sir, 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 friend, sir. Chiru Salman, I don't know. I would like to request uh, Bayapa and uh, Malik Pontagaru, all of the board of trustees, to present the play. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for all the time. Thank you for your patience. So, in the Chakad program, we task and so slightly oka and unknown Metuku choose that we tell us that Anna Kloda and Mana millets go in at Kloda. The task is doing wonderful programs like this every year. This is the first uh, Telugu Association entire USA for 50 years. And next year, we are celebrating 50th year. So, it is not, it's run by its. Uh, uh, worked by, I mean, everything is uh, done by volunteers like us, everybody. So, give him a big clap, uh, applause for all the volunteers. So, and this Andhapanga, Vichraiti Garu, current president, um, uh, so he actually, for 2019, he did an amazing job for last one year. We choose a wonder cultural programs, Vogadi, Star Night, Diwali, Itland, Itopad, Itland seminars, sports events, and health, cultural, arts and everything. We did a wonderful job. See, Sandar Banga, I mean, task uh, tarpana. So we are uh, appreciating and uh, felicitating Gujarati uh, Garu with Dr. Kadar Ali Garu. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next year, 2020, already we are the easy company also. Ramakrishna Salam is the president elect now and he will be president. So, 2020, my sincere request is that you choose a leader. Mana Tara Dhinit Lo Ondi. So, go and enroll yours if you are not life members or if you are not. Because Manandaram Kals Chiefs Call, it's not like one time movie girl. So, Manandaram, we have to be part of, we have to build community. So you have to take memberships or you have to take live members, it's worth more than that. We do a lot of progress. Manandra was such as we can't pass our good habits and culture to young kids. If you are not doing this, we are actually 
వాళ్ళకి హాని చేసిన వాళ్ళు చిన్నపిల్లలు సో అందరు ఓటు ఇస్తున్నారు ఏంటంటే ఫైనాన్షియల్ మీడియా అందరు సెల్ఫ్ సస్టైన్ ఉంది సో వీ హ్యావ్ టు ఎన్రోల్ సపోర్ట్ ఫైనాన్షియలీ అండ్ ఇన్వాల్వ్ ఇన్ ద ప్రోగ్రామ్స్ సో ట్వంటీ ట్వంటీ సో ఐ గివ్ ఇట్ గుచ్చడి గారు అండ్ థ్యాంక్ యూ ఆల్ ప్లీజ్ సపోర్ట్ అస్ వీ విల్ ఐ మీన్ కమ్ అప్ విత్ ఇన్నో ఇన్నోవేటివ్ ప్రోగ్రామ్స్ అండ్ వీ విల్ కంటిన్యూ లైక్ దిస్ ఫర్ ఎవర్ థ్యాంక్ యూ ఫ్రెండ్స్ ఏమనండి ఇది ఇయర్కి అలాగే నా టర్మ్లో లాస్ట్ ప్రోగ్రామ్ సో థ్యాంక్ యూ వెరీ మచ్ టు ఆల్ ద డోనర్స్ ఎస్పెషల్లీ ప్రేమ్ రెడ్డి గారు ఎవరి వన్ ఈజ్ అవర్ అడ్వైజరీ కౌన్సిల్ చేయి అండ్ ఎ గ్రాండ్ డోనర్ ఎ గ్రాండ్ సపోర్ట్ ఆఫ్ ఎనీ ఆల్ ద కల్చరల్ ఇన్ అవర్ తెలుగు కమ్యూనిటీ సో అండ్ ఆల్సో అదర్ డోనర్స్ వాలంటీర్స్ మై కొలీగ్స్ ఎగ్జిక్యూటివ్ కమిటీ బోర్డ్ ఆఫ్ ట్రస్టీస్ అండ్ ఆల్ ద మెంబర్స్ thank you very much for your wonderful support so with all your support we made all the programs a grand success and it is going to be one of the grand success for the year thank you very much for all the support now i would like to request our pot by pot to conclude the meeting uh, first of all uh, uh, thanks to 2019 executive committee team they did a wonderful job not only one area for the community they served in all the areas like sports cultural Uh, health and education every area uh, they involved and uh, made events um, for so kal telugu people and uh, thank you so much for them and even this event uh, usually we don't do any event in december but uh, when we heard that you know kadar oli garu is coming to us we thought we are going to make uh, our community benefited from this program so it doesn't matter tell you or you know anybody, anybody you know uh, can be benefited with this seminar that's why immediately we called them and uh, uh, confirmed our event and thanks uh, butcherity here for you know agreeing for this last minute event even though it's uh, just uh, two days before the event and thanks also here for uh, you know uh, confirming us and coming coming here and thank you so much kadar wali garu thank you sir we really appreciate that i think at least some people will be not some everybody is going to benefit from this event uh you know people have come here who have not come also should be benefited yeah and you know if you go to the website mana-task.org we are going to keep the whatsapp link so that you know you can just copy that link and join the link so that you know we have a lot of material uh, provided by dr garu we are going to put that material in the website uh, as well as the whatsapp group so the group link i cannot give you so go to the website mana-task.org we keep that link created by rasgar okay thank you so much thank you very much thank you very much for the wonderful coordination and support thank you very much for bringing such a wonderful program now i would like to request bye part to first aid rasgar please come please this uh, you are like traveling with guru uh, garu all the days I mean, sorry, I don't deserve this because um, you facilitated... No, 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 listen up to me. See, you facilitated Dr. Garo, he is a ocean of knowledge. I was just trying to go to the ocean and trying to take a small grain of sand. I don't deserve this. I mean, I need to work hard and add more knowledge. One day, maybe if I can tell you something which is useful to you, then that I will consider it, but I don't want this, sorry. I don't deserve this. Thank, thank you very much. We have a night to dinner. Only. So take the dinner and uh, you can have a question and answer session here or you can continue up to hotel with Dr. Garo.